An Apple iWatch has been rumoured for the best part of three years, but now Apple's recent activity points to the release of a smartwatch sooner rather than later. Now there are a number of things I'd like to see in an Apple iWatch, hopefully a smart wrist-worn device that finally justifies the existence of smartwatches as a piece of useful wearable technology. The first thing that really should be in the iWatch is an M7 processor. Now this processor debuted alongside the iPhone 5S back in September and shows that the company has experience building technology for lower power sensor usage, something that would be crucial to a sensor-packed smartwatch. Now, the M7 chip is able to collect data from the smartphone's various built-in sensors, including the GPS and accelerometer, without relying on a power-hungry main processor. This would be perfect for an iWatch, which wouldn't really need to be that high powers, but would definitely need to collect fitness data. Now, the second thing that should be in the Apple iWatch is a health book app. Health and fitness tracking could be integrated into Apple's next mobile software update, according to Apple news site 9to5Mac. Describing the app called Healthbook, the source said that it could collect and store data on fitness activities, including steps taken, calories burned, and the distance walked. Now, the Healthbook app is also su suggested to target medical and health data, tracking a person's heart rate and blood pressure, as well as other blood-related statistics like glucose levels. Those features are unlikely to be built into a smartphone, which leaves the door open for integration with a sensor-packed device worn on the wrist, such as the iWatch. Now, Apple holds patents for sensory information collection, including blood pressure monitoring, but it's unclear whether that technology is mature enough to be built into a smartwatch device. Now, as far as what the smartwatch would actually do, Apple has two options. One is to make it a second screen for the iPhone, and the other is to make it a fully independent device. Now, if they decide to make it a, 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 a secondary screen for the iPhone, it needs to have a number of different things. First, it needs to have a very simplistic interface that can be tr controlled mainly via voice, I would say. It needs to basically just show alerts from your iPhone, as well as track fitness data, like I've already said, show the time, and maybe, maybe play radio or something very low-key. Now, that, that would be what it would do if it was a second screen to the iPhone. It would basically try and put the focus back on iPhone, but it would be a very helpful secondary device to have. Now, Apple's second option is to make the iWatch a fully standalone device, which is probably an idea that I would support more. If they would decide to do this, it would, the iWatch wouldn't necessarily need an iPhone to be useful, maybe the iPhone would still add something to it, but the iWatch would definitely be able to function on its own. If it didn't basically, if it wasn't basically a second screen for the iPhone, the iWatch could have a slightly more compli complicated interface, maybe an app store like the Pebble smartwatch, and it's still probably some, a lot of voice command features, but it might be able to have a slightly larger touchscreen and something that you can actually do more on. Now, it's an interesting concept that a lot of other smart smartwatch makers have tackled, but I really think that Apple will need to go with one or the other. Now, the last step that Apple should put in their upcoming iWatch is to really tie it to iOS 8. Now, as I've already been talking about voice command, Apple could leverage Siri on the wrist for voice control and personal assistant duties, while requiring on the swiping features common to Apple's iPhone and iPad to navigate full screen apps. Now, Apple already has had some experience with this style of small screen touch interface. First introduced in September 2010, Apple produced an iPod Nano with an integrated touchscreen allowing touch control of music playback. At the time, wrist strap accessories were sold that turned the clip-like Nano into a watch using the iPod's integrated clock face feature. Now, it's likely that any iWatch announcements, if made this year, would be tied to the unveiling of Apple's next generation software, which would be iOS 8, which probably will be either be announced in June and released in September. Now, let me know what you'd like to see in the Apple iWatch in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!